Hey you guys, welcome back to another video. In this video, I'm going to talk about how to start a plant-based diet, a complete beginner's guide for overall health and wellness, as well as weight loss, if that's something that you're looking for. I'm going to touch on some basic questions that a lot of people have when they come into wanting to change to eating a whole food plant-based diet, as well as some concerns and just some general guidelines that will help you as you transition over. So if you're ready to make the commitment, stick with me on this video and let's get into all of that. Committing to eating a whole foods plant-based diet is a way to combat chronic illness as well as prevent lifestyle diseases such as heart disease, cancer, and type 2 diabetes. And just a little disclaimer, before you start any new eating program, you always want to talk to your healthcare practitioner to make sure that it is right for you. So what does a whole foods plant-based diet consist of? Well, it consists of 90% or more of your calories coming from whole plant sources. And this is actually much easier to do than most people think. You want to think about eating whole foods versus processed foods. And the definition of a whole food is a food that is close to the form in which it grew. It's not been broken down into component parts or refined as a different form of food. It's a real food. So when you first begin to embark on this journey, you might be a little bit confused as to what constitutes a whole food versus a processed food. Now this isn't going to apply in every single case, but I think these are pretty general ways to separate the two. A whole food is close to its original state. It spoils faster. Whole foods are things that your great grandparents would have recognized as food. They don't usually have an ingredient list, or if they do, it's a very short one. They're often sold without packaging, and they're often found in the perimeter of the grocery store. Highly processed foods, on the other hand, bear little resemblance to their original state. They don't spoil easily. They aren't things that your great-grandparents would probably recognize. They often have a very long list of ingredients on the package, a lot of times things that you can't pronounce or don't even know what they are. They are often packaged or boxed, and these are the things that are found in the center of the grocery store. There's a great quote from Michael Pollan. It says, if it came from a plant, eat it. If it was made in a plant, don't. And I think that's a really great way to look at it. Eating a whole foods plant-based diet is also extremely sustainable, especially in the times that we're living in with this pandemic crisis. There's a lot more plant foods to be had, so I think it's pretty interesting to see what's going on in the news right now and how actually eating a plant-based diet is something that's going to help you out in these times. Not only with your health and your well-being, but these are the foods that are accessible to you right now. So I really feel like the time is here, the time is now, and it all begins with what you put on your fork, your spoon, and what you put into your mouth. So now I'll get into some tips and tricks and just answering some general questions that I know that I've run into people who are curious about changing their diet and their lifestyle, and these are the things that always come up. My first tip is that you don't need to aim for perfection. You need to be able to eat in this way, eating whole plant foods in a way that's going to be easy for you and actually works with your lifestyle and the way that your schedule is. It needs to be practical and it needs to be something that you're gonna be able to stick to. So my advice is to keep it super simple. If you have three to five recipes that you enjoy that are whole foods, plant-based foods, Keep those on rotation. Not every meal has to be an elaborate recipe. I have a video that I'll link down below with five meals that I eat every single week and they are really easy recipe blueprints. Even if you stuck to those, you would be getting a wide variety of different plant foods that are going to help you um, maintain overall health and even help with weight loss. The next thing I wanna do is give you some sort of general shopping list. Now, with the shopping list, you don't have to get every single thing on the shopping list. This shopping list so we'll kind of jog your memory and give you some ideas. Oh, I forgot that this was a food I could eat and I really enjoy this. And maybe you don't buy all of these things every time you go to the grocery store, but every time you do go to the grocery store, you get a little bit of this, little bit of that, and that you're always kind of keeping it varied. And I'll leave it down in the description below. So make sure you check that out as well. The next thing people always ask about is how fast should I go to this new way of eating? Should I do it overnight? Should I do it slowly? And I think the answer to that is very individual. It really depends on your personality. If you're someone who you know you can flip a switch and change a habit without any problems and never look back, do it overnight. If you're someone who needs time to make changes in their life, there's nothing wrong with that also. You know yourself best. You know what's going to fit your personality. You know what's going to fit your schedule. So either gradually doing it, whether that means still having meat in your diet for three days a week, for example, and the rest are plant-based, or maybe there's one meal a day, even if you never completely get rid of animal products, if you keep 90% and above coming from plants and you have animal products every once in a while, you will still actually reap the health benefits. 
Of course, I'm vegan, and my hope is that you would consider going completely animal product free, but everybody is different, and you know what's going to work best for you in the long term, and you're gonna be able to find the right ratio for yourself that you can stick to for the rest of your life. Another thing that comes up often is how many times a day should I eat when I'm eating this way? And again, it all comes down to personal preference. I know people who like to eat five to six small meals a day. I know people who like to eat three large meals. I know people who like to eat two large meals and snack the rest of the day. What is your style of eating? That's what it's gonna come down to. You want to set yourself up for success. You don't want to be in a place where you're feeling like, oh my God, I normally eat two meals and now I have to eat these six meals and I need to make sure that I always have food with me. I don't think that's the best way to do it. I think the best way to do it is the way that's going to fit with your schedule, fit with your lifestyle, keeping it really simple, and eating when you're hungry, stopping when you're full. Everybody's got a different life, so you need to find what works for you so that you feel satisfied and you don't feel deprived, because when you feel deprived, that's the thing that's gonna just set you off and be like, forget it, I'm not doing this anymore. <laughs> and then another general example of ways that you could eat would be something like having um, a big bowl of oatmeal with some fruit in the morning, or maybe a fruit smoothie if you're on the go. A big salad, like the salad that I mentioned in my tasty salads that don't suck video, which I will also leave down below, a very satisfying salad or a big bowl kind of meal, like a Buddha bowl with lots of whole grains and beans or potatoes and vegetables steamed and raw. You're just getting a lot of variety in with that. And then maybe at dinner, you're having a big vegetable-based soup and maybe some no oil marinara sauce with a pasta, something like that. And your little nighttime snack is some nice cream, which is just frozen fruit blended up or a nice warm chamomile tea with a plant-based milk and a little bit of maple syrup. It all depends on what's going to fit your personality and your way of eating. So like I said, I have lots of videos um, that give you some ideas of how you can structure your meals um, and I will leave those down in the description below. My next tip is that when you eat a whole foods plant-based diet, you wanna stay away from oil. Any kind of oil is 100% fat calories. There really is no nutrition in it. Oils contribute to heart disease, oils contribute to obesity. So if you can kick those cold turkey, awesome. And if you need to step down and, and get to that no oil place, good too. You don't need oil to cook. You can cook with things like vegetable broth or just water fry or use vinegar. You don't even taste the difference. So getting rid of oils, getting rid of processed flours and sugars, those things are gonna be so helpful to your overall health, as well as if you're trying to lose weight. Those three are biggies. The next question that I hear all the time, and you know, we always hear this, where am I gonna get my protein? Well, the thing is, women only need 46 grams of protein and men only need 56 grams of protein to be at a normal level. Now, of course, we're fed nowadays with the mainstream media that we need so, so much protein in order to thrive and it's just not true. Getting that amount of protein even higher is totally easily achievable because all plants have some form of protein in them. You will hit this goal without trying. But say you're trying to build muscle and you're in the gym and you wanna make sure that you're getting enough protein, you can get protein protein from high quality plant sources such as tofu, tempeh, beans and lentils, legumes, all of those have a great protein content and you can feel free to up those as much as you need to to get that extra protein if you want it. Okay, now moving on to some tips to help you be successful when you decide to change over to a whole foods plant-based diet. My first tip is to make sure that you keep your kitchen environment very clean. And what I mean by that is what is in your fridge, your pantry, and your freezer are things that you can make delicious whole food plant-based meals from without even thinking about it. Those are the things that you have at your disposal to make sure that you're getting nutritious foods in. So if you have anything tempting in your fridge, your pantry, or your freezer, then you're going to want to either get rid of it or give it away um, and just have foods that are going to aid you in this transition over to eating more plants. If you have these tempting foods available to you at your fingertips, it's gonna be something that you're constantly thinking about and they're actually gonna be even more appealing than before you decided to make a change to eating healthier. So get those temptations out of your kitchen, out of your fridge, out of your pantry, and that will help you be set up for success. The next thing is you can't just fly by the seat of your pants, especially if you're not used to cooking this way um, and you're not ready to 
to be more organized with your food. You have to have a plan for your success. So that entails, in my opinion, things like taking one day a week where you make a grocery list. You have in mind the recipes that you're gonna make or the staples that you're gonna eat throughout the week. You write down the grocery list. Use my shopping list in the description as a little bit of an example to help you out. And then you are able to either cook some things ahead of time, like batch cook maybe some brown rice or some beans or batch cook some potatoes or chop up your vegetables beforehand so that when it comes down to that moment when you're hungry, you have choices available to you. Other things you can batch cook would be a big pot of vegetable based soup, maybe some whole grain pasta. And then these preparations just help you make sure that you are setting yourself up for success. And you also have tons of leftovers to just have when you are in a rush or you don't feel like making a full on recipe, you have things that you can throw together easily to make a whole nutritious meal that's going to benefit your overall health and weight loss if that's your goal. The next thing that I would suggest is always having a first course before you have whatever it is that you're gonna have, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, or however you space out your meals. And what I mean by this, it could be things like a bowl of fresh fruits before you have your oatmeal for breakfast. Any kind of fresh fruit is very water rich. It's going to be fairly low in calories um, for the amount that you can consume, which is something that is really wonderful for overall health as well as weight loss. Um, things like a large salad before your lunch, or your large salad for your lunch topped with other things um, or a vegetable based soup before dinner. All these will fill you up. These are your weight loss foods. If you're looking to lose weight, these are your multivitamin foods. These are your medicinal foods. So make sure to get those in before you move on to your main course. And then your main course can consist of things like any kind of whole grain, some beans, maybe a whole grain pasta, maybe a whole grain bread, maybe a heartier stew, those kind of things that are gonna keep you satisfied and full. And then the thing you wanna have sparingly are the nuts, the seeds, the fats. You definitely still wanna include whole plant sources of fats in your diet, but those are the things that you have the least of. So we're keeping it fairly low fat and we're having an abundance of fruits, vegetables, non-starchy vegetables, uh, starchy vegetables, whole grains, all of those are going to keep you full. And then to make sure that you're getting a wide variety of whole foods in your diet, you wanna to aim to have these eight foods daily. Does it mean you have to have them every single meal? Absolutely not, that puts a lot of pressure on you and maybe you'll be overeating if you try to do that. So these eight foods that you wanna incorporate into your daily diet would be whole grains and starchy vegetables, beans and other legumes, berries, other fruits, cruciferous vegetables, leafy greens, non-starchy vegetables, nuts, and seeds. So that is all you need to include in your diet. It might seem overwhelming at first, but it's totally achievable. These are things that you can kind of tick off your list and be able to say, okay, I'm on the right track. And the funny thing is a lot of people that I coach and speak with say that this is way easier than they ever thought it would be. It's just a matter of continually educating yourself and, and learning as you go. Do I know everything? Absolutely not. I learn as I go with each client that I work with. Everybody's a little bit different with their habits, with their daily routines, with what helps them lose weight, with where they feel satisfied, where they don't feel deprived. So it's all a matter of educating yourself on why you're doing this and finding the right formula for you. Keeping those basics intact, having those eight food groups that I mentioned earlier, keeping it no oil or low oil if you're transitioning over, no processed foods, and just having as many whole plant foods in your diet as you possibly can. There's times when it's gonna be good, there's times when you're gonna screw up, there's times when you know, things aren't gonna be exactly perfect and that's okay. There's a learning curve to everything, right? And so these are the basics and I feel things that will get you started off on the right foot. And then the last thing that I wanna say is that give yourself a chance to succeed. You at least need to give yourself a full month to try this out before you decide it doesn't work. And after a full month, I'm very sure that you will see the differences in the way that you feel. You're gonna feel lighter. You'll probably see weight loss whether you meant to or not. Um, you're going to feel just energized and ready to go. And if you make it to that one month mark and you're like, okay, I wanna keep going, give it at least 12 weeks. And by 12 weeks, you've set such a habit for yourself, an example of how you want to be and live. And I really think most people start thinking about things very differently. And it all starts with what we put in our mouth. So this is a very powerful change 
for our life and a catalyst for so many other areas in our life to be mindful of, to be uh, balanced and to live healthfully. I know that these tips are really helpful for anyone who wants to start a whole foods plant-based diet. This is obviously just a very general beginner's guide and I truly do wish you overall health and weight loss and that you're able to achieve your goals. This is a great way to eat and a great way to turn your life around or just get on a better disciplined track for yourself. So please like this video if you found it helpful. It really helps out my channel and subscribe because I have so many videos on this subject. I'll leave more suggestions for you down in the description below. Take advantage of the shopping list that I've put there as well and do watch those other videos because I know that they will be helpful to you. Thank you so much for watching and I will talk to you soon. Bye.